Something caught his eye that afternoon and made him stop. Likely processions like this happened all the time in first century Palestine. Another funeral. They were not an unusual occurrence those days when life expectancy was so short. And the city's teeming with pedestrians and animals like rush hour in any big city as this particular funeral possession passed. But this time, this time, this funeral procession made him freeze in his tracks. This time, he bids them stop. I wonder, I wonder when I read this story, I wonder if Jesus saw something in that widow's face, in that grief-edged face that caught his heart, that caught his heart in a deep and profound way so much that the gospel uses the word esplanashthe, esplanashthe, which literally means in the gut, in the gut it caught him. Something turned in his gut. Behind this casket, carrying this young man's body, walks this woman who walks alone, who knew this walk before. She made the same walk behind her husband's body as well. And now, now she had lost everything. She had lost the last thing she had left in all the world. Now she had lost everything. A widow burying her only son. Very much alone now. And as you know, in first century Palestine, for a woman that means she has nothing and is nothing. I, I bet you, I bet you what happened to him this time was that as that procession made it across the road in front of him and he came face to face with this woman who had already buried her husband and now without her one and only son because he had died, he saw in that face the face of his own mom. The face of his own mother. A widow burying her only begotten son. Sound familiar? Jesus likely was beginning to see that soon and way too soon his own mom would be that widowed mom absolutely tragically alone now with nothing and nobody her only son dead in her arms as well and it was like a punch in the gut and it cut deeply and he was so scared and so sad for her for his own mom too this was his mom now. My friends, that's where compassion is born. That's where compassion is born, right there. That is where compassionate action comes to birth. Right there, right here, in the gut. He got it now. This woman's pain became the pain of someone he knew and loved very much. It became his own familiar pain now. I see it on campus sometimes when Relay for Life happens and the, the students are standing out there into the wee hours of the morning because of their mom having cancer. They get it now. They know that those women with cancer 
are the faces also of their own mom who had cancer. It's going to happen again in St. Louis next weekend with the, with the Walk for the Cure in Forest Park. So many will be making that walk because of some woman somewhere along the way who was a victim of that very same disease. And they get it now. They know it in their gut and something turns in them to make them do that. And knowing that pain in his gut he could not just stand there. No detached observer, this man anymore, to all this pain happening in the very midst of this city that is happening all around them. This is not just another funeral procession anymore. He had to do something. He had to. He had to reach out to her in love. He had to. And his first words are to her, to her, to this widowed, now childless woman, a mom, who is really for him in that moment, his mom, Mary. My friends, suffering will come, right? We know that. It has, it will. The losses we will face will be deep. They will cut deep and they will leave us grief-stricken. But perhaps in the midst of that grief when it comes to us, we can remember this, that something of this day could become a gift that I can give now. And maybe in the midst of my tears and yours, we can find some little piece of the beginning of gratitude that will exist there as well that says, I hope someday I can use this to help somebody. I hope someday this awful loss can become a gift to another human being. Something of this someday could be the gift you give. And if you can find it in you, this compassion that is born in your guts over your own suffering and loss, then when that knife cuts deep into your gut, you will do something, something, and you will act you will stop in your tracks out of that compassion and you will help. You'll do your best to help. That turning in your gut demands no less. <laughs>